Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. Hey everyone, welcome back to the ASO TV podcast. That's the place. And <laughs> thanks for joining us again today for iZombie Season 4, Episode 3 and 4, Brainless in Seattle, Part 1 and Part 2. I'm Nikki, and with me tonight is Kim. Hi. Hi. I mean, we didn't plan to double up these episodes, but I'm glad we did because it worked. Them- because they really were a part one, part two. It wasn't like it just continued on with the story. It's not like, oh, we're, you know, going from another person's perspective in part two, blah, blah, blah. It really was. It, it felt like a like an hour long episode. Well, wait, they are an hour long, right? Uh, yeah. With well, commercials. It, <laughs> with commercials. So I, it's like a double. It's f- like 40 minutes each. Yeah. Well. My point is, it felt like like those you know two hour premieres that sometimes we get mm. that they don't that shows don't really do anymore because you know most networks have too many TV shows in their programs list now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, as far as the episode goes, I just want to address the brain at first because it drove me insane. Um. I hated the brain so so much, but I liked the episode. There were some times it was a little, it was a little. I felt it was a little much. Um, not like not, I'm not saying that Liv's character played she overplayed it, the character, but it was this whole super like freaking super romantic like instant like it was like the it's obsessive compulsive <laughs> i mean she yeah. was obsessed like oh instant it's like oh and i'm just like Star. i mean <laughs> i feel like we're gonna jump around a lot because this really both these episodes felt like one so um as far like I completely agree because, you know, there, there's always that slow-mo, really nice, like, cheery music. And then, you know, it was like... She it's was, romantic comedy because this was supposed, to be, that was supposed to be the joke. Yeah. And then she sees the vanilla extract in the cupboard and the same thing happens. And I'm like, weird. wait, what the hell? What? Because it was supposed to be comparing, like, because it was destiny. It was the destiny that I found. Was, it, the uh, yeah. yeah, I... Whatever. I'm just like... <laughs> and uh, she did say something at, around that particular part where she's like, why am I cooking all this food I cannot eat? And literally... <sighs> I, uh, I wouldn't eat it. I wanted to eat it. I wanted to eat it. Oh, I'm, I mean, even <laughs> though... Even though I, I'm a zombie and only brains can sustain me, I would eat the fuck out of all that shit. Rather, whether or not I could taste it or not, you know, I... Did, I it looked good. Oh, I didn't know Liv could. Oh, I mean, the for her, I don't think it matters. It doesn't. I love that she made the the brain into little hearts. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> little chocolate hearts. That was interesting. Um, that that's that's getting back into the first uh part, but I. The brain shortage is even hitting live at this point because yeah. at, they had only a, a smidgen of the brain left because the rest of it got taken, Stole. got taken, and it's been split up between a couple of places. I guess. like one place definitely was Blaine's because he's been serving it for like this whole week now, and I. The other one was some other business. I don't know. This is the first time I've heard of another. I don't remember what it was called. It was like D. La D. It sounded like some French. Uh, yeah. Restaurant. Like another restaurant type deal, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I mean, I, I would expect for things like that to crop up, especially if it's, you know, 
there's no other way to make money because you can't really leave Seattle and, and whatever anymore. So what you're going to, you know, attach yourself to the venture and make yourself money at this point. It's try it, it's feeding zombies because, you know, they're paying arms and legs to get a little piece of brain. Um, uh, I, you know, you know how I am with Peyton. And how I, I don't like her, but we to hated her, then started to like her, and then started to just kind of like fell off the. Now she's back, and you know I was like really dreading her because I I don't, I mean I, her personality's a little off for me. Like she just seems a little, I don't know. It's not overbearing. At the at the same time, she is a little over. She's an overwhelming character as far as like just her personality. Not not in this show. She's not in this show enough to be like that. But she has the patience of a saint. Because if <laughs> anybody can deal with Liv on this fucking brain, I give them props. Like, Yeah, she really, like, I think she was a good good addition to this episode. Mm-hmm. That's right. We don't see her that often, but I think it was because she kind of well, she the wingman kind of like she when it came to the being the and then yeah then having to deal in the bar of her being ridiculous it was like you dragged me out here and now you're being zero fun because you're being a big baby because your dude didn't show up because you're a stalker. Uh, the the dude just lost his girlfriend of a month, um, because she died. Also- and, I know. <sighs> And he's a possible suspect in her murder, and you are, you know, writing him love sonnets, and, like, what the hell? You're touching his hair and saying it was a pregnant spider? Oh, my God. Oh, okay, okay. I'm just sorry. I, you know, to eat your own. Okay, sure. I don't like people that get attached that quickly, that fast. I don't. I have I have been on the receiving end of this kind of affection, and it drives me insane. And I'm like, no, just no. You calm yourself. <laughs> you go over there and sit down. <laughs> I've never personally experienced it, but I can tell you from my reaction to these episodes that I would not like it. <laughs> it it's Too a- many times, I don't even... I don't understand it. I don't know why. But I guess just too many times it's happened to me. Too many times. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, I mean, I've always liked the actor who played Alan. He's friggin' he's hilarious and he's a good actor. I can't think of his name right now. He's adorable. And, uh, it's uh, shit. And to be Sam? honest. I, Sam? Sam Huntington. Okay. Uh, what else has he been in? Being human. He plays the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes! Okay, he was my favorite part of the the, the American part of being human. Um, yes. We can go super old school. He's in Jungle to Jungle. <laughs> I loved him so much when I was little. That makes so much sense now. Wow, yeah. Okay, it's been a while. He's in a bunch of other stuff, but yeah, that, that's 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 two things that I, I knew him from. That's probably the first thing I know him from. That, okay. That's probably why I found him very um, entertaining this episode. Like, yeah, I, He's I, adorable. I will give Liv that, like, yeah, he's, he's attractive for sure. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, just calm yourself. <laughs> I honestly don't think. I think the brain. I don't think the girl was actually like that. To be honest, I feel like I, yes, I, I she didn't think was, it was uh, upped it up a little, but yeah. I mean, obviously, being attached enough to someone to go into a zombie afflicted thing with after a month, yeah, it's a little. It's but uh, <clears throat> I love all of the Jane Austen references. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It was she definitely was super weird. <laughs> it was, 
she was amped up as like the actual personality of I think her name was Anne, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um I think uh on Liv's end it was just she was just overdoing it. Not not that she was doing it on purpose, but I like I honestly don't know, but uh, it was really annoying. <laughs> and I mean this girl also um she like we said, getting snuck into Seattle, this part of Seattle, New Seattle, as I think they're calling it. And she witnessed some, not even in in Seattle yet, and she witnessed some shit. Not only is her getting into, to, to, into Seattle illegal as far as, you know, that goes. But she also saw executions driving in. Oh, yeah. That, like, that I would have jumped you. out that fucking van and just ran the other way. I'm there like, was... what was that about? They have too many zombies. Well, yeah, They're... I got that. They're definitely having issues with that because we don't have yeah. the brains. Yeah, they... I feel like, you know how they have the one cardinal rule, we don't make more zombies? I feel like there's other rules and uh, I think the smallest of the rules are getting zombies killed. Not Obviously, not in front of people, off to the side, in the dark, you know, in the illegal parts of New Seattle. And, I mean, we've kind of seen it now. We kind of figured out. I mean, it's not that we figured it out, but we suspected that it's kind of like a suspicion of ours that Major's going to be in the middle of something like that. Oh, where yeah. he gets... where happens to do something and it's the wrong something and he's on the chopping block or he goes to save someone he gets in the middle of something Mm -hmm. because we know that he's still he's very righteous when it comes down to stuff he has he has a lot of high morals like he he just knows he wants to do the right thing all the time and i feel like after watching these two episodes it has to do with one of those kids i think so too I think um, because the one's already in trouble because she made a zombie. It wasn't really on purpose, but I mean, I mean she's in trouble. I have a feeling it's going to be the boy. You think so? Because they, the girl's been doing bad, doing bad, doing like she's already you know mouthy and whatever. I think the boy makes a mistake, and that he that that's the that major's going to have to like step in. And I think that's where what it puts him on the hot seat. Or not. the kid messes up and he goes to cover it up or something. And then he gets caught. Some, some. It could a lo- have a lot to do with Angus as well. Right. Um, that was my second thing because we finally get them to actually happen on them now. Which I still mm-hmm. don't because it took so long I was surprised because they weren't that secretive about their... So that nope. they finally happen upon it. I like that the the kid that got turned into a zombie that he seemed kind of lost. His friends were leaving him and all that other shit. And he found them. I'm happy for that because I felt bad for him because it wasn't his fault he became a zombie. No. I mean, I mean, he was being dumb. We'll give him that. He was being stupid. But, I mean, it was just like he got left and now he's like, oh, I found new friends and new people. It wasn't even just that he got left. It was like, they're like, hey, we have a pack. Go kill yourself. Basically. Yeah. Like, and, you know, even though you know you're, like, mostly dead anyways, you're, you still have enough common sense not to kill yourself at that point. And for, um, for him to, I think his name was Tucker. Tucker, yeah. I, I was actually happy that he found them, too. Unfortunately, Angus is the head of the freaking retard brigade, and he's got everyone believing into, uh, like, a zombie higher power. And that they... And Fillmore Grace is the bad guy, which... Yep. <laughs> I mean, they are on a fine line. And they teeter-totter, you know? Because, you know, you know what they did to get where they're at? Mm-mm. But what they're doing to try to resolve it and keep it under control is a good thing. But... I just... Major... He's in... 
he's on the wrong end of the stake right now with Fillmore Graves. I mean, especially since you know they're they're dealing with Blaine still, and they're getting really desperate to get the brains because they're not only trying to feed the people; they have to feed their art like. Their army. Their I swear, their if something happens well. to Renegade, I'm gonna be so mad. Cause she's a really good character. She and is. she's a good person. And she's like the like the one like doing good things that's going on right now like, to try to help people. And this whole we get our backstory, which I really liked, and we get to know that, you know, she's been watching Liv and she does what she does because she and she trusts Liv because Liv does what she does to to help people. Now, was was her husband the reason why she knows about Liv? Was her husband an episode back in season one or something? I almost want to go back and look now because I don't remember. I I don't remember it either. I but don't. then again, season one was kind of a blur. Okay. I want to say, well, I mean, it happened. It was just. A lot was happening in season one, and it was kind of hard to keep up. Also, it's been a few years, so my memory's not as great as it used to be. <laughs> but I would, I think I'm going to go back and watch when I have time to make sure. Because it would be really interesting if they left, if they did that. If they, um, they kind of like planted that seed back then, being like, we know where we're going with this series. And hello, surprise! <laughs> we did a thing. <laughs> that that's really unless maybe he was, but she wasn't, or maybe she was a different character, like different person played that character, and that's the other maybe. thing possible. Yeah, that's true. But I do agree. I I love Renegade because you know she's they're gonna do something to her because she went against the the rule. Was don't make no new new zombies. She cured that guy of Parkinson by making him a zombie, and that was recent because she was in the laundromat. So, right. and Blaine saw it, and he's working deep in there with Fillmore Graves. So, I mean, it's his word against hers, and they know she ate a zom- She ate brain, or he ate brains to see the vision. So, and oh my God, him him on the. The the loose lips brain. <laughs> Just... I I wanted to call it the honesty brain because not only was like everything he said was true, he had no filter, like there's there's no stoppage, no wall there to stop the words from coming out. But it was all truth though. Like <sighs> you're underpaid. Huh? And he no It's like what I am paying. He's like just 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 just. just. <laughs> And in the restaurant, oh, that fell on the floor. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, um, he's like, he's like, no, it's just. just <laughs> I I agree with Red Bandit in chat. He uh, he's saying that the episode made him feel really uncomfortable. He liked the episode, but the, it was the brain, and that's exactly what I said. Where I was like, I like the episode, but the brain drove me insane. Because to be honest, that kind of personality would make get, it unnerves people. It's all like you're, you're, because there's a difference between being clingy and just being scary. <laughs> it's like, it, especially nowadays, um, for people who aren't really outgoing as far as like going out and like going to bars and things like that. We're kind of like stuck in a technical age. A good, a, good, a good amount of us are stuck behind our computer screens most of the day, interacting that way, doing work and everything. So when someone gets up in your face and is like petting you, it's it's a big no. There's also going to be a big difference between I'm going, I'm, I'm sitting in a police station right now, being touched, and I things happen at bars when you're drunk, but. <laughs> <laughs> There's a totally different atmosphere. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's not only us that feel like skeevy around this brain. Clive was flipping out for both of these episodes. Like he's like he, he he understands that you know you're on a brain you're on a brain right now. But you know, I do know that you are in there and you choose to say certain things a certain way. 
and uh, you cho- choose to act a certain way sometimes, you still have a little bit of power over what you do. And he goes, this is all you. You're being a jackass. And, I mean... Well, she knew something that he that she didn't realize he wasn't telling her. So yes. Clive was being close-lived about shit when he should have said something. Even though I know he's being like, he made a big deal saying that it's none of her business because it's the difference between business and work. And I'm like, you two have been friends. So don't pull this like job card all of a sudden because you guys yeah, are closer friends than that. Don't don't give me that bullshit. So what we're talking about is that um, uh, Clive and Dale. Um, they're in an open relationship because Dale is a zombie. He's a zo- she's a zombie, so they can't do any of the sexy stuff. So, I mean, they have a good, you know, obviously social relationship, which isn't bad. But you know, you, when you want to be with somebody, you 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 know, and I, I'm, it you can't when it's a zombie and things because stuff happens. But. Yeah, that that's exactly what Clive is keeping. I mean, they have been friends for a long time, but even friends can, you know, want to keep things sub like super personal. That that I mean, that really really wasn't Liv's business to get up in there. I mean, yeah, she did witness Bazio making out with a dude at the scratch and post, and she. Sh- Maybe Liv should have just came out at first. Yeah, she should have just said something. She hung on to... Piddling around. Yeah, exactly. She, should, she shouldn't have hung on to it for, like, I think it was, like, up to, like, five or six days. Almost a whole week. Because well, that's how much time it was almost the end passed. of the episode. We didn't, we didn't find out that they had an open relationship at the end of, until, into the second episode. The second episode. So, yeah, a lot of time passed before she was like, okay, I saw Bazio. And she did this. And he's like, shit, now I have to tell you. So... I think she should have just, like, straight out said, hey, I have something to tell you. But to be fair, the first time she sees Clive after she witnessed Bazio was when Dale and him were together in the cop shop having a chat. So it's not like she could be like, hey, I saw him, she saw her cheating on you. <laughs> like, it, it's, there had to be the opportune time. But, unfortunately. She had times. I mean, no, she decided to try to hook him up <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, she's a cutie. Oh, she, and, I know. She, and she seemed into it, so. Especially when they... <laughs> the, the the coffee mug incident was interesting. Because... The one what said it on the... Yeah. The, what did the it mug. say? Nasty, nasty bitch or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was mine. Okay, Clive, I know you're trying to go along with this, but she knows something's up. <laughs> I I know, I kind of think that she doesn't expect Liv to be behind it, so... Me, my if that were me, and my, I had to get my mug back from him, I'd been like... Nice try, bucko. I know what you're <laughs> trying to do. This obviously was not an accident. <laughs> Don't mm-hmm. give me that lee. Exactly. I see, because, I mean, an open relationship means, you know, he can do things, too. So I kind of think, I don't think he's going to go all the way, but I know he's going to get close to her. And soon as Bazio sees that, or he even hears about it, she's going to rage out. She's going to flip. Because you know it's how it is. It's okay for her, but it's not okay for him. But exactly. I see that happening. And he's the one that's sitting there struggling so bad. Like, I thought he was going to start crying. Honestly, when he had to come clean to live. And she's like, you're not the open relationship kind of guy. And he was like, no, I'm not. And I thought he was going to cry. And I was like, oh, oh, poor Baba, no. Well, he's liked her, for, like, forever. Mm-hmm. Like, and they've been, and then they had the big fight. And he's been, like, miserable. And then they got back together. Then she got turned into a zombie. So he hasn't yeah. had the best of luck. <laughs> no. It seems like not many of the characters have luck with love in this show. It's true. Oh, oh, major. Oh, major. <laughs> you know, 
can it became be- painfully obvious out there at the end that he's still in love, and I think he always be in love with Liv. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> and you know, the brain he was on in the end. I mean, it's there. It's blue juiced, so it's it's hyper crazy. And at one point, I before even that scene with Liv, I was yelling back at him. <laughs> I was like, could you just shut up? I was like, oh my god. It was so bad. Oh, oh, like, oh Randy Savage. That's what that's what I was getting from that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh is, my god. The, the scene with Liv where, you know, he's like, I'm just happy you're, like, he yelled it, guys. But I'm gonna just, you know, tone it down a little bit and, and tell you basically what he said was he went to Liv and said, I'm here for you no matter what. I'm glad you're happy. And I'm sa- I'm just upset we left it the way it was. And I hope you can forgive me. That's the basis of what he said. It didn't Read come out that lot, way. Though. It didn't come out that way. Obviously, it was like also like a million decibels higher than that. This is not something I should be yelling at you. <laughs> 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 the best thing was was Liv's response when she yelled back a little bit in the same kind of tone and like phrasing and with the biggest grin on her face. And it's just like, yeah, I got this. And then she found out that her new new crush was a zombie supremacist. And he believes that zombies are better than humans. And well, she was like, F been- you eaten face on the middle of the dance floor. That was horrible. And I love that they all cringed when you got yeah. to see the... First it was like the oh, the cute... And because it was the whole uh, mm-hmm. romantic comedy thing again. That whole yeah. facade where they you know, the, the you're seeing it from the the the, the target's perspective. You're seeing it from beautiful. Liv's perspective yeah. where it it's romantic. It's beautiful. It's blissful. It's, it's innocent. Mm-mm. They were licking <laughs> each other's faces. <laughs> I was, mean... I'm like... Yeah, I mean, it was it wasn't even the the first time that they did that. Like their first kiss was like that. I'm like, guys, that's not how you. That's not how this works. You don't eat, eat each other's faces. <laughs> I mean, Calm I think I think he was just going with a Tim Timerson, but <laughs> I think I it was all. She was even like, "What's with the na- what what name? No, that name is banned. I'm out. No, bye. <laughs> Later. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm. I'm actually really glad that they they ex him right away because if it would have went on for a few episodes and she found out that he was all like human suck she would have been so devastated because she would have learned to like him by her her own self rather than on the brain oh no as soon as she would have been off that brain that guy would have been <laughs> i don't know even without the super- no 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 Definitely, like not Liv's type at all. Yes, he was attractive. We'll get. We'll. We'll. we'll get. He was a nah, cutie. Not. Not. Uh, not not major attractive. No, major. <laughs> <laughs> not major attractive, but he was a cutie. Um. We all know that. Um, we're fans of major. So. Oh yeah. Team team major. Team major. <sighs> and just... I still like Blaine. Still like Blaine with with Peyton. Yeah, unfortunately, Peyton doesn't like it with Blaine. So. <laughs> Which is sad because Blaine is in love, still in love with her. Oh, that's the most hilarious thing because when he's not distracted um, with business shit and Fillmore Graves down his throat, what who he's thinking of is Peyton, and it's it's obvious like it's it's been a thing in like the last couple seasons and even still now but i don't see blaine get another chance but ravi on the other hand i think ravi's gonna get another chance i don't know if he's gonna want it though i don't know either i feel like he he likes the the friend dynamic i like ravi got yeah the like what red, red said in, in with ravi ravi was having a lot of fun this episode oh gosh it was so great and the the fashion montage though it got bad really fast <laughs> <laughs> when his shirt was all the way up here <laughs> that was major's closet 
Where the why the fuck does Major have a fucking floral crop top? I don't think it was a crop top. I think he rolled it up. So he rolled it. Came, it? I don't know if it became a crop top. I'm pretty sure that he he changed it, and I think that was funny that he walked. That he just walks in, Major goes, "What are you doing to my room?" <laughs> what? I fuck? mean, <laughs> he Major reacted fine to it. Um. Well, Let's he, talk, okay, I gotta I gotta point this out because this is this you wouldn't unless you follow uh Robbie's character on Instagram, you wouldn't you wouldn't know this. So the the suit the suit that he was wearing, which we know is was obviously uh majors, mm-hmm. is actually too short for, for him. So if you you see him on Instagram, the sh- the pants are a little the little high water a little bit. And he was pointing it out, he was running around on Instagram, and he was all like, Look at my pants, they're too short. <laughs> and and I was like Obviously, we we wouldn't get this because obviously it's probably not really Major's clothing, but Major's taller than Robbie. That's true, he is. <laughs> so, oh it, it doesn't seem Where like, are the pants? A... I mean, if it was a, a you know personally tailored suit, I mean, Major might have like a longer torso and a shorter like you know. Good point. That yeah, sometimes that does work like that. Um, but also, Robbie's. Skinny and that 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 jacket fit him pretty nicely. Oh yeah, we all know was that fitted. Major is he's well, he's, he's got muscles. Well, <laughs> so I'm like, I don't, I don't. Are we sure this is where this came from? <laughs> I mean, they they had to put him in a suit, so it kind of had to look good because you know so they maybe, were doing yeah, a makeover did, montage. Did about it, so maybe yeah. they did. Maybe that one did came out of Robbie's closet, and maybe they just mixed it with stuff that came out of Major's. Maybe. That. What I want to know is, what when did Major move in with Liv? No, they they, were, they, they no they they moved, they they moved to they went to his house. Oh, so Liv... they left. They left. Re- yeah, they left Liv's house and went to. Oh, so Peyton and Liv aren't living in the apartment anymore. I could have swore I saw them. Or is Peyton they, not living? They were at the apartment. That's Robbie came to their apartment. They were they were at the apartment, and then they left the apartment to go back to Robbie's house to do a makeover. Oh, okay, I'm all mixed up about that. Like there was no like. Let's get in the car and go. So no, yeah, it was like kind of transitional. Like, <laughs> it was like pop, 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 pop. So I, I, I thought like Major moved in with Peyton and Liv, and I was like, there was no spinning bat signal. <laughs> yeah, there was none, none Sorry. of that shit. So yeah, I was a little confused there for a second, but I, I guess that makes sense now. I mean, they can't, they can't fill us in on every little detail, unfortunately. But yeah, that that's that's what happens. They just moved houses. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the killer, who mm-hmm. happened to be the guy that smuggled Anne in in the first place. Um, I mean, they kind of left it open in the beginning of part one. They just said, it, they just showed a scene of uh, of her and him telling her that she can do it, that you know she'll be fi- just fine. And they left it at that, and then we find out that it wasn't her boyfriend of a month, Alan, who killed her. It was actually him. Um, <clears throat> he chopped her up. He shot her, and then harvested her brain. Yeah. And then tried to burn her, and she kind of got away. Wait. No. So yeah, he kidnapped her. Kidnapped her. It was a little. So he like went to go. Like he didn't actually take her to to get out. He took her. Took her to this warehouse or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, was going to kill her there, but she got away from him and ran. So he killed her while she was running away, and then he bashed up her brain and took her brain out. Because that was the whole point. Because you know. That's the whole smuggling gig is to. But like he didn't people. get all the brain because he, like I said, he probably looked like he sounded like he got uh, interrupted, probably by another another zombie because the, obviously some of the brain was missing. So the zombie ate some part of the brain, and all we have left is crumbs. Well, I, I know like her brain was also split up between two establishments, Blaine's and another place, and then there was enough left for Liv to have a few chocolatey snacks of. Except for left in the brain. What did she do in the 
in part two with the brain, she put like a little hat on. She's like, oh, my food's got a hat on it. Was it just like a like a? Oh, she put. It was a. It was a. Pepper. It was a, like in a jalapeno or something. A sliced. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Her. I can't get over the fact it was something that me and Dom were talking about and how um, diabetics, over time, if they don't uh, manage it, they lose taste buds. And they are only, they start eating more spicy food because they can actually taste the spice and they get the sensation and everything. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, so diabetics are I zombie zombies. Because they like spicy food because they can taste it better. <laughs> Which is, I mean, they don't eat brains. That's the only difference really, right? I, I'm sorry, that was just a <laughs> weird little tangent. But no, it's, it's, like... a true, it's a true fact, you know. Um, they just like spicy food better. Um, well, it's because I mean, it's got enough kick to it, I guess, mm-hmm. to get a taste because you're not you're affecting more than just your taste buds and in, in with that i guess yes. nerves too you burn the shit out of them yeah uh, <laughs> but no like we have her adding the pepper to her brain in the car and then we have um tucker and his friends before the whole where he's still finding himself them joking about him putting hot sauce in his beer so the whole spicy thing obviously is public knowledge now. And I never really thought of that. Well, I'm sure they get a lot of hot sauce comes into into Seattle with stuff or whatever and fireball. <laughs> Drink fireball. <laughs> I mean, I don't <sighs> It's not really spicy. I think it's just it's like it just has a kick. So yeah, it 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 definitely knows how to kick you in the wrong spots. I don't like Fireball. <laughs> um, it's like an acquired. <laughs> it is an acquired taste. Now that makes me think because you know at one part during one of these episodes, I think Liv drank too much, and she said she was gonna vomit. That she was going to get sick or what? Oh, what? in the beginning of the first step, they were drinking. Yeah. So they both were drinking a lot. It looks like Peyton can hold her liquor pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, and something were, about like, shots. yeah, not wanting to dance because she might vomit or something. Yeah. They were doing so, tequila shots, though. Yeah. So zombies are affected by alcohol at then. In, in this case, like, they can feel the same ramifications if you drink too much. I mean, I, I don't know about, like, hangovers or anything, but it seemed like Liv couldn't have any more because she would get sick. Well, your alcohol, even though maybe they're not taste, really tasting it, which probably makes it worse. Because mm-hmm. you can't, they can't really, it's not really affecting them, like, taste bud-wise. Though they might be, because if you're if it's a little, if it's got a burn to it, they might mm-hmm. be feeling. They might still be able to feel the burn, depending on uh, depending, obviously depending upon the liquor and how it's. Because uh, obviously, uh, like chilled Patron tequila doesn't give as much as a as a, of a burn. Um, as some other things, obviously, you're gonna get a burn with things like vodka gives a nice, because usually gives a burn unless the, mm-hmm. even even ch- chilled alcohol seems to give a little less of, of of that back kick than other things. So I guess it really depends on how it's served, and yeah. and especially if if you can handle your liquor better, sometimes you don't get as much like you don't the burn doesn't affect you as much. So it's just like whatever. I don't know, it's just, they're just little things that were fun, like, after four seasons, now kind of, like, finding out about zombies. Like, I didn't know that they could get sick from alcohol. Like, I just assumed that, you know, their body wouldn't metabolize it, because... They still eat, I mean, they still eat, so I guess it still could affect... I mean, you're still... I guess it depends, I don't Well, we haven't really established how their innards work. I mean, obviously, no. you know, they have to consume brain to survive. Mm-hmm. And it obviously affects their psyche. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but we never established how it affects like their bowels and the. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're not going to have a talk about how they poop on this show, but I mean, exactly. It but is, I mean, it is, it's it possibly is maybe of... their liver and everything still works. Obviously, just they have to consume a different thing. They just consume brains instead of like regular food, even though they do food as well with the brains. So, but... in Rena- in the laundromat with Renegade and her two buddies, they were both zombies too because they were shot in the head. Right. So when she made that comment about the one guy eating pork rinds and it was going to kill him. So maybe that is another indication that you can still abuse your body as a as a zombie. When it's all possible, even though you're still even though you have to consume brain to survive. survive. Yeah. And obviously we've seen them eat other things with the brain. So mm-hmm. you're still technically Probably part if you can remember what they can return back to human. Yes, we've seen it with the cure, so it's technically considered it's almost a they're a disease. Um, it's like uh the concept of the last man on earth, or I guess the newer version is the uh oh what the fuck is the newer movie called the one with Will Smith. I am legend. I am legend. Uh, that is that movie by the way. I am not a big fan either, but <laughs> that's the same. The zombies in that was a disease, right? Um, it started, yeah. It was it was a uh, technical. It was warfare uh, that became zombies that way, mm-hmm. and that's actually the, which is the last man on earth, which is actually the book it was the first time you saw zombies brought on as a disease. So that is that's the concept that we're going with here is that it's kind of a disease, though it was obviously brought on by a drug. Right. Um, that, but, but being that they can turn back to being human, which means that means part of their body is still human. Right. So I could see that even though they have to consume brains to continue to keep mentally. So I think it sounds more like it's a mental thing. Obviously, we know from like the comic books that it's some soul attachment. Yeah, things it's, like that. There's it's more of a supernatural, supernatural element. Side to it. Yeah. Um, but. It's totally possible that their bodies still function as human. If they have to, if they can become human again, that means their body still has to continue to work. So even though they're consuming brain as nourishment, they can still are still eating human food as well. So there's kind of like they're half and half. Like they're still they're considered undead, okay. but they're still human. So they're probably their liver functions, and they probably do pee and poop and all of fart and all of other kinds of good stuff. <laughs> I mean. Human functions are probably still going on to their body. Obviously, we haven't pointed that out. They probably don't feel like that's something to point out. I, I, whatever. It'd be funny if it was pointed out at some point or other. I but hope if, it does. It, that would be a really <laughs> funny brain for Liv to be on. But if their liv- if 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 their liver still working, the alcohol could would be affecting your body. So you'd still get okay. hangovers. I mean, it's still affecting. Obviously, your own brain is working. So their their brain still functioning as human. So that though it's going to affect your your brain, your motor functions, your everything. In the same way as be a human, you probably can withstand more alcohol than a normal human, unless you're drinking with Peyton. Unless, <laughs> unless you're drinking with Peyton, because apparently Peyton is not normal. <laughs> so, maybe you know what? Maybe she's not human either. Maybe she's some sort of other thing. Could possibly be. We haven't brought the other supernatural. Things into this world. It's Not totally yet. plausible somewhere down the line if we do get introduced to the other stuff, because we know from the comic books there are other things that Peyton is actually not human. That would be a, a crazy twist that I would that she's actually, actually like a werewolf or something? Or something. I'd like to see that come about. I would really love to see that she had kept that secret all this time and then I'll just whoop. Oh, that makes me so excited, even though it's not even. <laughs> probably ever going to happen you don't know but i mean it would be really amazing to just come out of nowhere that peyton is actually not human so you mentioned that you know they're the zombies are possibly some part human and they can turn back into human and that leads me to the cure which blaine has is this the first time we know like this is the first time we know for sure that someone has like we've been freaking out for like what is it a season and a half now not knowing any idea where that was it went Yep, and Blaine, it's confirmed, has them. And he used one of the vials on a dude 
to turn back into human and then eat his brain, which made him loose-lipped. So he could find out where Renegade is. And <sighs> Blaine, seriously. I mean, he did it because he wants Fillmore Graves off his back. Yeah, he wants to continue to do his dirty dealing, as he bluntly said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like, and it's the sad part is he knows. You see him; he's all like, "I gotta go, go get a nice lady." Like he knows she's a good person. Mm-hmm. But, and, and but we, we all know Blaine, a nice he's, out for, he's, he's all for he's out for himself. Yeah, it's but, always been that way. Oh man, Peyton was the only one that could possibly change him, and he she did, kinda. But he was lying to her the whole time because he wanted to be with her. Mm-hmm. So he pretended that he could she couldn't remember and that he, she caught him. But which is sad because he was trying to be good. Yeah. And I, I mean, honestly I, think he would have stayed being that way if Peyton would have allowed it. I also would have he probably wouldn't have done he would probably would have been fine if Angus didn't come into the picture too. Like his <laughs> his dad came back and he still feels like he needs to prove something to that man. Wait till he finds out what his dad's up oh, to now. Oh my god, I know. Uh, I mean, he's the only one left in the dust right now. Well, like, Liv doesn't know, but I don't think she... Eh. But I mean, the only other person that's gonna be like, oh my god, my, my dad, and look what he's doing is, well, Blaine, because Fillmore Graves found out and they... they mm, I feel like they're going to try to do, not Major and his group, but, like, obviously Major has to report back to Fillmore. And Fillmore Graves is going to do something about it. And it's going to be violent. And that's where all the chaos is really, really going to start. Oh, yeah. I can't. This episode, these, these episodes, they're just... There was a lot of things revealed. Like like you said, like we didn't know about the cure until now. And that was something we had a really big freaking hissy fit about. We were actually mad at one point. Like, what happened to the fucking cure? <laughs> um But we do know that, you know, obviously, you know, Robbie's still working on his shit. They just haven't really um addressed it as of ne- as of late. Oh no, they kept it a little Yeah. Um, God, I really, I really don't know what else we could, I mean, I, I'm sure there's lots that we, we, that I went over that I missed. Um, I'm just quickly trying to see anything. Uh, I can't think of I just feel sad for Major because, like you said, he's still in love with her. Oh, yeah. He's going to be. It's going to be this off and on thing forever that we won't get closure until they decide to not. Like, it's going to be that it's going to be that one relationship that doesn't get taken care of until, like, the very end. They'll get they'll end up getting back together. I mean, it'll probably get to the point where, you know, it's the end of the series and one of them is like on death's door and it's going to be like, I love you. And then fade to black. <laughs> There's something I am. I don't know. <laughs> One of those endings that's going to really <laughs> piss me off. I hate endings in there. <laughs> it's like, nah, 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 nah. oh, goodness. I'm just glad that, you know, everybody's open now that, you know, Clive has told Liv what's up. Um, you know, Major came clean to live, and you know they're all still on really good terms because at the end they're all dancing together. But I feel like at the scratching post, it was humans versus zombies. It was a dance was off. Horrible. It, it was, but I feel like the way that they they set up the end scene where we had Peyton and Robbie on one side, and then we had. Major and live on the other side, even though they're dancing and laughing and having fun, I feel like there's going to be a split down the middle later on in the season, and it's like a, really gonna be friends, human friends versus the zombie friends, and it's gonna be like that, and it's gonna be rough. That'll be interesting, but yeah, it's gonna be hard. Yeah, because 
you know, Ravi and Major became really close. And, of course, Peyton and Liv are best friends. And, I mean, both sides are ex-relationships. Yeah. So it's... Mm, I just feel like... A, the show's gonna go down a lot of freaking roads, and I. Emotion, a roller coaster. It's gonna, yeah. <laughs> Red Batter goes. I don't know why it took so long for Liv to cal- tell Clive about Dale. I know we talked yeah, about yeah, we that, talked about and we were like, "Uh, well, Clive shouldn't have been so, you know, secretive because they're friends." But then at the same time, Liv took forever to come out with the the news and everything that she found out. So it was it was like a. Both sides needed to come clean at one point, but it wasn't going to happen. Um, yeah, with Fillmore Graves, I mean, I believe by the end of the season, Fillmore Graves is going to be done. Um, I don't think they're going to address Fillmore Gra- Graves anymore. I feel like a different organization is going to take over. Um, and the integration of zombies into human lifestyle past um th- this wall that's in that is new seattle um is gonna happen because it's obvious that seattle isn't the only place where zombies are we know that zombies exist across the world right now and mm-hmm. it's gonna be hard to s- just keep walling off places because eventually what ha- what's happening in new seattle is gonna happen in other places there's gonna be a brain shortage um, they're going to get to the wire where there's going to be no more brains left and things are going to go boom and zombies are going to be hopping the wall and there's not, nobody's going to be able to stop it. So I feel like it's going to be kind of like, a, not just going to be feel more graves, it's going to be a bigger organization that is worldwide that's going to try and integrate zombies into human lives. And that's what, what's going to happen next season. I know that we're only in episode four right now, episode three and four we're talking about. And, it, you know, next season's a long ways away. But I don't see Fillmore Graves, like, their lifetime is, it's coming short. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just speculating. But just from this episode, I know we, they even gave us a timeline of how, how many, uh, how much brains they have left. And they said, what, three to four months? Or was it four to five? I mean, either way, that's a short amount of time. Oh, yeah. And between these two episodes, it went through, like, almost seven days. So, if, I mean, there might be time jumps. Maybe. Because we still, I mean, we're only, like I said, four episodes in, and they happen to do, they still do a mid-season break, even with a short season, like, like the season, so. But. Did we get a mid, mid, is this a mid-season, I thought, is this a mid-season episode, or do- this wasn't a mid-season episode, but they oh, do do mid-season the way, episodes. The way they ended it, it made it, like it, it seemed like it could be, you know? I mean, I feel like we've been watching iZombie this season a lot longer than four episodes. It does feel like it's been more than four episodes. Maybe it's because of all the thing, like all the information they're throwing at us. Because, I mean, obviously, zombies were secret before this season, before the end of last season. And since then more and more things have come out, so maybe it's just the fact that we're getting so much information about everything right now that it just it's overwhelming. It feels like a lot more than four episodes. Ugh. But... I didn't realize there was only four episodes until we touched on I was like, really? Yeah, I know. I, I It does feel a lot longer. Um, but I think for uh, part one and part two, we cover pretty much everything because even though it was two episodes it was the same storyline yeah and it it just melded so well together i'm so glad we decided to do this at one time and just talk about them both um but yeah i think there's so m- there's little things and i i don't i mean it's not like i jot down every little like scene and everything anymore i used to do that like at the beginning of when we started these podcasts, but um, I used to have a notebook with a bunch of stuff. Not even take notes anymore. <laughs> no, um, so I, I feel like we've talked about everything about these episodes, and I'm just going to reiterate that 
the brain was terrible, but the episodes were great. Because mm-hmm. we found out, oh, there's the one scene, and I, 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 I have to bring it up. It's when they're sending Robbie in for undercover to bring out the bad guy. Pickles. And <laughs> that Pickles was his safe word. But there was also a little conversation. Um, it was, it was, you know, it was Clive, you know, telling Robbie to calm down, and you know, it, everything's gonna be fine. We have a SWAT team, and then the pickles, and then Robbie goes, "Well, you know, what's this place I'm going to meet at? What's it like?" Liv turns around to him and goes, "Remember that French, the, the cute little French chocolate shop in Chocolat?" And he goes, "Yeah." It's nothing like that. <laughs> and I sat there for a while. I had to pause the episode because Ro- I paused it on Robbie's reaction face to her saying that. And I wanted to die because <laughs> it was so priceless. <laughs> That's just, I mean, <sighs> that was Liv coming through straight out. That was not, I'm on, I'm a love bug brain. So, but. I think that's the last thing I want to mention is just because it reminds me of other things and people actually have said things like that to me like remember this well it's nothing like that it's like it's, oh, it's thanks. like the it's like the it's like a douchebaggy thing it is and obviously the inner live is a douchebag um, <laughs> but I think that she's a what, closet bitch she is <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think we're we're quite done with this this these two episodes unless you have anything to add. Nope. All right. So with that, um, Kim, where can the people find you? Are we gonna talk about the next episode? Oh, yeah. Why not? I mean, it's there, right? <laughs> oh my god! I completely just like. That's what I'm here for. Thank you. <laughs> I completely blanked. I'm sorry. I had to say it Canadian so it, it you know, it, it it sticks a little bit better. Oh my gosh, I don't like <sighs> Okay. Next episode, episode 5, is called Goonstruck. While tracking the murder of a hockey player, Liv stumbles onto Chase Graves evil plan. Meanwhile, Major is forced to make a horrible decision. And lastly, Peyton tries to contain a volatile situation. That tells us exactly nothing other than it has to do with hockey. And I watched the preview. And, and did it, you? Liv loses a tooth. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently Blaine is involved because Blaine, they have Blaine in, in, in the police station. So something happens. But because Blaine goes, are we going to talk about the fact she's got a tooth missing? <laughs> that <laughs> explains the Instagram photo I saw the other day of Liv and Robbie standing to e- next to each other with goofy grins. And it, she had like, okay. The black, oh, yeah. Yeah. She, you see her on the ice in the, in the whole hockey outfit and she, she rams into some dude. <laughs> I can't wait because <laughs> her on sports brains makes me so happy. <laughs> when really. she paints her face. <laughs> She's a Seahawks fan, guys. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> okay. That will be next episode. <laughs> I would, would, it would be more funny. I, this is going to sound horrible because I'm thinking the whole like hockey in Canada. She was on a Canadian hockey brain <laughs> oh my gosh she, then she's gonna be saying a and she's yeah, gonna be no. saying oh no oh no yeah. i hate it i hate it when canadian stereotypes are placed in media like that i freaking hate it <laughs> it drives me insane like canadian bacon it's fucking ham damn. <laughs> god damn it anyway that's our show for tonight, guys and gals. Um, thank you so much for being with us. Kim, where can the people find you? Uh, on the Twitter is uh, H-U-F-F-I-T-Y, P-U-F-F-I-T-Y. You can also find me on Twitter at LadyVenom24, L-A-D-Y-V-E-N-O-M-24. 
You can also find all of us and more on YouTube and Twitch at ASO TV Podcast. Also on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus. I'm not going to say the other one because it doesn't freaking matter anymore. And we also have a Discord. And you can come and join us in conversations and post memes and tell us on how you enjoyed some what episode of whatever show you like to watch. And with that, thank you so much again for joining us and good night. See you Bye. next time. <laughs> Don't you know? Don't you know? <laughs>